So one question we encounter a lot on Career Ferry, obviously, is how to find a job after graduation. Whether you have a lot of job experience or you're just getting started finding your first internship, these are a few tips that will help you make the right choices on your way to a truly fulfilling career. So one of the first things you need to determine when basically making your first all-important career decision is where do I actually want to work? Defining the geographic location in which you could consider employment is obviously going to affect the number of options you have for entering the job market. Whether you're sure that you want to stay in a very particular city or country because that's where you have your ties, whether you're ready to move to a more exotic location because you know that there are more opportunities out there is going to affect the number of choices you have and is going to be an all-important factor. But you have to make a conscious choice here. Don't start applying for jobs that are not in location that you would actually want to work in. The reason is that if you accept a job offer just because the job sounds cool but you actually don't think it is in a city or even a country that you really want to work in, you're going to be unhappy. Setting the right boundary conditions to find a job that you're going to be truly happy in. Thinking long term about career choices is going to affect your happiness. And that's obviously the main thing to strive for. Second big advice, don't be too focused on job titles or so-called prestige of roles you're considering. Taking a job just for the title is like buying fruit just because it looks great. What you're interested in, obviously, in a fruit just of a title is how it tastes, right? And the job should ultimately taste right. Job titles are just that. They're just labels for you to put on LinkedIn or for you to have some sort of a reference to your colleagues in the company. But very often, these don't have so much impact on what you end up doing on the job. What you end up doing is actually determined by the people you work with, the setup of the company, and the level of flexibility it gives to its employees. That's the thing you should find out when looking at companies and interviewing them, which is actually a key aspect of the job search that we're going to come back to later. Job ads are a thing of the past. That is truly one thing that we believe at Career Ferry and which is why we have developed our platform. When you read through a job ad, the only thing you're getting is a very brief description of the role, generally written up by an HR who hasn't been in the position him or herself, making it difficult for her to actually describe the tasks at hand for someone who would to enter that role. Then what happens is you will have three or four bullet points for the key qualifications or skills you should bring to the job and three or four bullet points for the main responsibilities you're going to be facing on that task. So to understand why job adverts are actually that bad at describing the role that sits behind it, you have to understand how they are made. Basically, job ads are published by the HR or recruiting departments of companies. The people writing up these ads are not the people who would actually be your colleagues or who have actually experienced the role at hand. That's a key factor. What happens when a team within a larger company tries to grow? You will have a team leader who has certain needs for his team as it's growing. Right? They will have to communicate that generally by email to a human resource representative for him to publish the ad. A lot of information gets mistranslated or actually not translated at all when this information is communicated, making it very difficult for the human resource representative to actually publish a job ad that's truly conveying the nature of the position, which is why we think that you're not getting the first-hand information when reading through those. Live streams that you can watch on Career Ferry are first-hand information from relevant people because they're actually your colleagues telling you about the roles that the company is offering. That, in our opinion, makes a major difference for you when looking through jobs during your research. Next point that's often misunderstood. How much does your background, whether academic or generally educational, affect your chances of being hiring for a particular role? The answer is way less than you think. Do not misunderstand us. Obviously, your qualifications, your skills, impact your ability to be hired for a particular position. There are definitely jobs where you need specific, well, academic degrees. When you hire a plumber, you definitely want someone who has somewhat of an education in terms of plumbing, right? But what you have to understand is in today's job market, companies are really struggling to find qualified or even talented individuals to fill the roles that they need to fill in order to even operate. And that's why they might be willing to train you for any role that you're interested in, even if you don't have the immediate right background for it. That's a very important element. If you don't have a directly qualifying background for the role you're interested in, don't despair, but think through 
in general, your experiences might have brought you some very relevant skills, even if they came indirectly to you, that you can actually reapply within this new setting at this company that you're interested in. Generally, companies nowadays want very diverse teams from various aspects, whether that's obviously gender, um, nationality, language, uh, cultural, but also educational. Because they know that in today's ultra-diverse, globalized society, well, their customers are very diverse and seek different things in their services and products. And if their teams don't reflect that, well, their revenue is gonna suffer from it. So now, as you take all these elements that we've discussed into account, you should reflect that probably the horizon of opportunities that's open to you is a lot more diverse than you initially thought. And you could potentially position yourselves for roles that you thought were probably inaccessible to you. And that's a great thing. The only thing is you have to position yourself as a strong candidate, and for that, you should think about your job search as a long-term project. Finding a career is not a quick fix. If you're doing this right, you're not just looking for a source of income so that you can support yourself. What you should look for is an environment that's gonna help you become the best version of a professional that you could become. And that's not easy, and that takes a lot of time, and you should accept that. But there are tools at hand to help you get there. In our opinion, we have actually built the best one for it. On Career Ferry, as you might already know, you can discover companies from the inside by watching live streams featuring their current employees in the teams that you could join if you were to apply to them. So there's really no better way to discover jobs than by watching our live streams. During 45 minutes, you can just passively watch company representatives talk about their passion for their projects, but you can also ask your own questions if you have some, anonymously or not, to get the information you want and to network if that's what you're looking for. Build up knowledge about the companies you already like. Understand if certain roles or departments of companies are places that you could see yourself in the future. Understand which type of colleagues you actually could work with or not. And ultimately figure out what kind of role, what kind of company, what kind of industry will make you happy in the long term. The answer might be a lot different than what you currently assume. So, Taking some time to explore is more than worth it. If you basically have no idea where to start, write down a list of interests of yours, things that excite you in the world, even if they're completely unrelated to your field of education or study. By doing this exercise, you're gonna discover industries, companies, job types that you probably didn't even know existed before. Try to network with people who are in these roles as much as possible. Getting first-hand information from the people you would work with or whose role you would share if you were to actually join them is massively valuable because there generally will be no filter. These people will tell you what they like about their jobs, but also what they dislike. And that's a massive asset when it comes to actually taking the decision. Think about what truly motivates you. Are you more driven by the compensation you could get for the role? Are you more interested by working for companies that are truly trying to have a positive impact on the world? Do you really want to solve a problem that you may be personally experiencing? Or is there a particular technology or methodology that certain companies use that truly excite you? Those are factors that should matter when it comes for you to make your actual career decisions. When you take your time on this journey, you will end up finding roles that truly excite you. I can guarantee it. But what should you do when you actually get to that point? Generally, you will discover that role through a particular company operating in a specific industry, right, with specific competitors and in specific position in the market. Look for alternative companies in that same market or alternative companies in different markets that offer the same roles, right? You want to optimize for yourself up to a certain level, right? Compensation is also important, so you want to discuss this with the employer. You want to make sure that you get the feeling that you're treated fairly by the company that you join. Because if you don't, you're going to feel resentment at some point, and that's going to be fairly early on your career journey with them. And that's, again, going to affect your career progression negatively. Make sure you get a fair compensation for any job that you decide to take on. And lastly, a very important point. Focus on the team you would work with. The people you're going to work with are going to be the major deciding factor on whether you're going to be happy in your job or not. Those are the people you're going to spend most of your professional time with, right? We're talking several dozens of hours a week. That's a lot of time and you want to spend that time with people that you enjoy being around, that you respect and that you feel you can learn from. If that's the position you end up in, you're going to enjoy yourself professionally. Don't forget to reapply the learning methods that worked for yourself in the past so that you don't lose track of information you acquire and so that when it comes time to making the decision, you weigh in all the aspects of the learning journey to actually reach the right conclusion. If you take the time to reflect for yourself, you will end up making strong career decisions.
we can guarantee it. Hopefully we can be a small part of your career discovery journey. Check us out on careerferry.io, register to our live streams, and again, use those live streams as knowledge resource when it comes to building up your understanding of the job market and when it comes to understanding where your place should be in the professional world. Thanks a lot for watching and see you on the next video here on Career Ferry on YouTube.